I'm Danielle Royston, and this is Telco in 20. MWC 21 is in the books. And boy, did Telco DR show up to play. We totally owned MWC this year. Cloud City was the destination at MWC. We killed ourselves to pull this off, working days and nights nonstop to take over Ericsson's ginormous 6,000 square meters, or for you Americans, 65,000 square feet of space. So much happened this week. First, I launched Totogi, a web scale charging startup that's built on the public cloud. On Tuesday, I delivered my keynote on the huge GSMA stage. Did you see me riding the dragon? We created an entire live TV show called Cloud City Live with over 50 speakers and now available on demand. And oh yeah, no big deal. We threw a John Bon Jovi concert where he played his iconic song, Living on a Prayer, acoustically, which is so great to hear after being in lockdown without live music for over a year. It was epic. A seismic shift happened this week in the telco industry with the public cloud. And it happened because of Cloud City. Back in March, when this crazy idea first popped into my head, I had my friend David Hazelwood on the podcast and he asked me how in the hell I was going to pull this off. And so I wanted to bring him back on the podcast to talk about how much we kicked ass. So I'm aboard our yacht in Barcelona and I've dialed up David on Google Meet to give him a little FOMO and to talk about how we just rocked MWC. So let's take 20. MWC is over and it's just like so crazy incredible yeah no I have one question for you because you were absolutely everywhere for all of MWC and I have to admit even the old school media outlets who were not as quick to pick up on this Cloud City story came around and said that you were the queen of MWC I have one question for you did you ever sleep I have not slept in a hundred and five days. (laughs) Seriously, we had to create time, right? We had a hundred days and booths of this size are usually planned in nine months. Mm -hmm. And how do you bend time? And we did it. And the way we did it was by not sleeping. (laughs) Got it. We worked weekends. We worked seven days a week. I would go to bed at two o'clock in the morning. I'd wake up at six. I've been doing that since March. I've been doing that all through MWC. I'm exhausted. I'm 50 years old. I was like, yeah, no big deal. I'll just pull some all-nighters. I used to do that all the time at Stanford. I used to do that all the time when it was like a little junior, whatever, worker. Like, I'm going to show them by working hard. It hurts a lot when you're 50. So not recommend it. But we pulled it off. You did. We pulled it off. So let's talk about that. So when we talked back in March, it was this huge white space opportunity, huge booth. I mean, literally, was it like 60,000 square feet or something like that? And it was a huge investment. I mean, numbers have been thrown around. It's in the millions, the investment that you made. I know you said something out about some metrics, some key, some ROIs. I mean, I think the bottom line everyone wants to know is, are you happy with it? Did you hit what you wanted? You know, I was talking to one of my friends last night about what I could have done better. There's not one thing I can think of that I could have done better. MWC is about deals and about meetings. And I haven't read all the press. I've been super busy, but we knew this was going to be down. It was down. What we did see were the senior execs came. I mean, the CEOs of major groups, their leadership team, you weren't seeing delegations of like 200 people. Mm -hmm. You were seeing entourages, I guess it's like a smaller thing than a delegation, an entourage of about 15, 20 people, but we got all the meetings we could get. And so on that metric, which is, I think the metric of MWC, right? The whole purpose is to fill your funnel. Did we fill our funnel? I mean, our cup overfloweth. It's awesome. From what we can tell, you know, and the details are still coming in, you guys absolutely own the show. I mean, that's what everyone was saying. Even the old school things that you own the show, you got to give a keynote speech. You even had Bon Jovi play live in your booth, which I think has to be some kind of first. And then your parties on the yacht and stuff. But that's all the flashy stuff. Like someone like me that didn't get a chance to go thanks to the passport issues will be something there that we might have missed where you dominated, but it wasn't as obvious as some of these really flashy things that you guys did. 
I think we really changed the conversation. I think that's like the end all be all baseline here. It's really hard to change a conversation at MWC. They have their themes. The themes are decided in advance. They're decided by the big time players and the old school telcos. And it's really hard to sort of like, hey, I'm a little person. I would like to discuss the public cloud. They're not going to listen to me. And so I think what I really was able to do was to show GSMA, MWC, the industry, is that there's a lot of momentum around the topic of public cloud. We created a cloud city out of nothing. 105 days ago, this did not exist. It wasn't even in my head. And to be able to like, you know, have this seismic shift, I think everyone heard the crack. It's just been awesome. Speaking of the old guard, what made this happen was the gift that Ericsson laid in your lap by bailing. They bailed early and they bailed in like a really obvious way. Have they reached out to you? Do they want their booth space back? I heard they already reached out to GSMA and said that they want their booth back and they're coming back for 22. And I guess, yeah, taking off three years from MWC, right? I guess now they're ready to like announce something new, I guess. But yeah, those guys are not reaching out to me. And pretty much they they hate me. It was kind of funny because last night, John Bon Jovi, he played a great acoustic set. He played Living on a Prayer acoustic with like a slightly different tempo. I mean, it was epic. And then, you know, it was kind of wrapping up and saying, you know, this is my drummer and kind of doing a little bit of a current call. And I was like, he hasn't played Wanted Dead or Alive. And you know who's Wanted Dead or Alive right now? <laughs> So, and that was his encore song. He played Wanted Dead or Alive. It was perfect. That's was perfect. Awesome. Well, here's an idea. Maybe you can reach out to the GMSA guys and tell them that you should take over whatever booth of one of these incumbents to snap them back into shape and get them to do something different. And when they get their I booth have, back, after you've taken I it over for a year, then they have to do something different in Boulder. They just can't keep putting up the same garbage over and over again. So you're kind of like just the disruptor in many ways. So who do you think might be in line next for these old guard incumbents that didn't show this year? Who's, whose booth might you take over next? I think they'll never bail again. I mean, I really should, right? I mean, I feel their pain. I mean, some of them aren't reaching out to me, but some of them are tagging me on LinkedIn. Multi-billion dollar companies are like calling me out or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, you realize that I just launched a company. I have zero revenue at the moment. And I love that you were threatened by me. I think you're validating. You're validating that I have a super strong message and that you're scared of me. And I'm like, thank you. Let's retweet that. <laughs> Let's right? do that. Let's that Everyone look at what's going on here. And so I have pushed hard on the old guard. I am shaking up telco and I'm going right to the front door and I'm not backing down. And it's awesome. So let's talk about that. The old guard, you actually had a lot of the new guard in your booth. So if I'm not mistaken, you had maybe dozens of other companies that were public cloud focused in your booth and you provided them with space. What went behind that? That's a really interesting decision where you basically said, I got this whole cloud city thing going on. Why don't you come join me? And these are companies that I don't know who down the road, they may even compete with you, but you gave them some space. How did that work out? And what was kind of your long-term thinking on, on that decision to really be sort of the epicenter of, of the public cloud there? Well, I think you gave me that idea when we did our first podcast and you're like, uh, who's Telco DR? You look like a podcast. <laughs> this is true. This is true. The consultancy. Yes. Yes. There is definitely oh, you a need for blog. content. Yes. I did a LinkedIn search. There's like four people that associate with you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to fill the booth? Right? Right? And it was so funny. And I laughed so hard. I was like, oh my God, he's totally right. How are we going to fill a football pitch? We're in Europe right now. So we'll say football, mm -hmm. right? Or we'll say American football field and a half of space. And I reached out to a bunch of different vendors. And I was like, hey, I already paid for it. I'll do the full turnkey experience. Yes, you might compete with me. We might compete later. But as long as you're doing something in the public cloud, let's create this little cloud city army. And we've done that. You know, what was going on in that booth was so organically awesome. We grouped them by um, cloud native software. So like the software guys and the northbound guys, the BSS people. Then we grouped the southbound guys, the network people kind of together. We had IT transformation people focused on migration and cloud savings and getting your data off of being on premise and they would sit there in the aisles and you would just see them connecting and talking 
And then uh, Telco would come in to talk to them and they'd pull in their new buddy. It was just a little club and it's like a little army. I think that the sum of the parts can be greater than the whole. And I think that's what I'm creating and it's awesome. So you basically reinforce the message, right? Everyone who showed up to the booth, I mean, it said Cloud City right on the front, right? So people know what they were getting into. And so once they crossed that threshold, they knew everything in there was aligned with that. So by getting somebody in the door, that would be a big win. There's nothing else in there except things that are aligned with your message. I'm assuming you were able to bring in all the big people from the tier ones, tier twos, tier threes. Did you feel like you got all the people that you wanted? You said you got a lot of leads. You get everyone through that you wanted to get through? David, to describe this booth, I mean, you weren't there. It was stunning. There's no one in MWC that didn't come through our doors. Yeah. I like to make this comparison, which is there's like the golden nugget. You and I have been to Vegas a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. The golden nugget. It's very glitzy, very flashy. Sometimes flashing lights brings people in. And that's a whole strategy in Vegas of just like, you know, come in, you know, free buffet. And then there's Bellagio, which is like this understated elegance with this conservatory of peace. And right when you walk through our booth, there's real plants. There's this like huge planter with real plants and real trees. There's this beautiful setting of Japanese silk that's flowing that looks like a cloud that's like has colors and a little bit of wind. And it's just this like sense of calm and peace. And then you look at the facade of the Cloud City building, which has been shot a bajillion times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, mean, I saw people taking selfies, putting on Instagram, putting on Twitter. Every person that wanted to do an interview wanted a shot at the facade. This is real glass. It was super hard to source. We had a ceiling in the building. Everyone was like, the quality of this booth has set a mm -hmm. new standard. So yeah, I got everyone in my booth because people everyone were like, yeah, I want to go see what this, this is like a whole new thing. So it was amazing. We got everyone awesome. wanted to see it. I was talking to a vendor who said, we did in three days from Monday through Wednesday. We did in three days what normally would take three years to do. As in far as the meetings go, yeah. the, the, getting the messaging out there. That's the incredible. The leads, the meeting, the sales development of a lead. I mean, awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think there's one final question I think everyone has on their mind. So you did this, you took you 105 days, you pulled it off masterfully, you became the queen be the fairy godmother, if you will, of MWC. I think everyone wants to know, is Cloud City going to be making a comeback in February slash March when MWC comes back around again? So you've got, <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. Are you going to, are, is Cloud City going to make a comeback? Yeah, you were sleeping when I delivered my keynote. And there's this moment in my keynote where I call myself the queen of the public cloud, right? And I do this like great <laughs> queen sign and there's like this like crown that appears. I then put myself with a picture with the crown on top of a dragon. And then the dragon flies off the screen. Now, you gotta understand my keynote is like 72 feet by 20 high. That I mean, was amazing. Yeah, that, that, that screen was something else in of itself. I look like, I, you know, I'm a super short person, right? I, when I stand <laughs> next to you, I mean, it is ridiculous, right? You're more than a foot taller than me. It's, it's a joke. But yeah, it's Cloud City coming back. And am I a one hit wonder with my podcast and my newsletter and my blog, <laughs> right? And like, oh, this random Tatoki thing. Yeah, I'm the Elon Musk of Telco. And I know how much you love that guy. The answer is clear. <laughs> Cloud City's coming back in February. It's That's what we're going to see you next. Right? And we're going to be stronger awesome. next year. And you know what? We got to start planning tomorrow, right? I agree. I'm still in Barcelona. It's seven months away. You need to start planning. It's February 28th. And so, hey, Cloud City Army, you want in? Shoot me an email, right? <laughs> you, have, you came to Cloud City? Awesome. Tell me what worked, what didn't. Let's make it even better. We are amassing the players and we're going to go up against the big guys. Their time is over. They love the status quo. They love it the way it is. They're winning. They're fat. They're comfortable. They don't want to change. We want change. And so we got to start pushing super hard. I would like to sleep for a week. I, I'll, I'll <laughs> I was going to ask, that was my final question. What are you going to do? Are you going to take some time off? Are you going to go in like one of those decompression pods and float for a couple of days? Or what are you going to do? Are you going to go to, go to Hawaii? Well, what's, to, what's your plan? Round it out with, the, with the top of our conversation and then passports and just Americans who are just traveling like crazy. I want to go to Hawaii. My family wants to go to Hawaii. I mean, for the hundred days, you know, my family was like, why do you have to work so hard? And I'm like, when you have an opportunity like this, yeah, right. Sometimes you just, you just got to do it. And it was a huge opportunity. 
And my team, the people that I work with, the vendors that we hired killed themselves for this and for this uh, moment. And everyone needs to sleep. Everyone needs to chill because we've got to come back to work and work on 22. Right? It's in five minutes. And so your password should be back from from Ted Cruz. should be back there. Like I met Ted Cruz. If you're listening, please make sure it's ready. Well, DR, I think I speak for your teams. I think I speak for your vendors, I think for the speak for the people that collaborate with you on this. I also think I speak for your competitors as well. When I say absolutely phenomenal job, well done. And I think that nobody could believe what you pulled off. And so I hope you do get that rest and you do get a chance to go to Hawaii because you deserve it because what you pulled off was absolutely incredible. Congratulations. Stick around because we're ending each podcast with a Telco in 20 takeaway. I have 20 seconds to tell you something you need to know. Cloud City was a total success any way you slice the data. People ask me all the time, what is the ROI on the event? The ROI is huge, and it was huge from the beginning. I think at the onset of taking over the Ericsson booth, maybe a few hundred people knew about Telco DR and the public cloud. Now the public cloud is part of the mainstream conversation in the telco industry. While MWC had fewer attendees, about 20,000 according to the GSMA, the key people in the industry were there. And without their huge delegations and entourages with them, the Cloud City Army had unfettered access to all of the senior leaders. With Ericsson, Amdocs, and Nokia missing the show, Cloud City got all the meetings they wanted. Everybody knows that MWC is the best way to build your sales pipeline, and 2021 was no different. We had 7,500 people through the booth. The demo stations were constantly busy, and Tatogi alone is sorting through close to 500 leads. And deals got done in the booth too. One of our vendors closed an $80 million software deal at the show. Wow. So anyone out there wondering, hey, DR, was it worth it? My answer is, heck yeah, it was totally worth it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. The Cloud City Army is driving change in this industry that always talks about how slow they move. And if you're a telco exec out there that's sick of the slow-ass pace and want to revitalize your telco, shoot me a WhatsApp at 925-TELCO-DR. Let's connect on LinkedIn and on Twitter at TELCO-DR. And please sign up for our awesome email newsletter on TELCO-DR.com. Thanks again to my friend David Hazelwood for breaking it all down with me. Hasta luego, nerds!